You talked about alpine skiing and the slalom. What do you? What's your opinion on the freestyle skiing? The combination of those, you know, that we see in the Olympics, the moguls and the jumping skiing that's judged in ways other than time. Well, you ask you ask two questions. You ask about judging in ways other than time, and you also ask me what do, what do I think of these? Yes, things. really, two questions. I mean, they are judged that you get yes, an overall score. Let, let me answer the one that I can answer more easily, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is purely for a personal view on it. Skiing to me is something that is extremely beautiful, and what those people are doing in their moguls or in their jumps and so on, it's not beautiful. It's happening. And that's fine too, but for me, that's that's something that's something completely completely different. And it is remarkable, especially with the aerial people, how many of them come out of out of gymnastics uh, rather than out of, out, of, out of skiing. So so that's that's that. As far as the judgment is concerned, this is not just it's not just a judgment concerning your particular question, but it has been ever since people started trying to put a numerical value to beauty or to aesthetics. I mean, the huge argument, for example, in the middle of the 1980s when people started splitting their skis to jump. I mean, the guys that did this first, Bukloff was the one who made it more famous in Sweden, the guys that did this first got marked down every single time. And then lo and behold, he jumped further. But the Norwegian ideal was not to jump the farthest. They were saying, build a bigger jump and we'll jump further than anybody else, which is, of course, what happened. When they, when they invented ski flying. But, <clears throat> but the idea was to be as beautiful as you can. Mm -hmm. And so how you put a mark to beauty has been the, the question. And that, in one sense, is still the same. It's, it's the same answer. You can write rules and regulations, and you should read them. They are boring as can. This is a big problem in ski jumping. It goes way back to the yeah. yeah. But the interesting thing about ski jumping that now, you know, towns, local towns that had ski jumps are now deciding to build them back up again. Fred Harris jumped down at Bradley, which was my first time I ever jumped a 60 meter jump. But I say jump, it fell all over. It wasn't how far you went, how well you went that far. Right. And the styles of jumping have gone through, through a number of styles. Uh, first of all, originally there were, there were basically two styles. What the Norwegian called Optrick. Which is where you, where you go off the up and you just raise your legs like that and you stay in a in a kind of a squat position, and then they <clears throat> decided that it looked more beautiful if they stood up, so they stood up. Then comes the matter of how you what you do with your hands. And first of all, you're doing just keeping keeping uh, keeping yourself going. Then you get through to the windmill style. And then in the 1930s, the Rude brothers from from Norway, Kongsberg, gave what they call the Kongsberg style. And they held the skis like here, and then they have about a 90 degree bend at their bottom, like that, and the hands out here. And that lasted for about, oh, up into the mid 1940s, probably, maybe, maybe a little afterwards. Then comes a variety of styles where you, <coughs> where you lean, your skis are here, and you're leaning here. And the idea here is that you create a kind of an airfoil. And the, 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 the idea of creating an airfoil is then increased if you split your skis, and that occurred in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, the sort of the progression. But how you then mark that, those different styles, is where the, is where the arguments come in. So how many points you put to it. So don't ever try to <laughs> mathematize beauty. <laughs> it won't work. <laughs> you know. I'm interested in the project to recover the lost ski areas. What was the definition of ski area? Um, he has that on there, and it, I, I, it runs something like this, any area with a toe, any sort. It, it's not, he's not interested in, in what we would now call a Nordic area or anything like that. He's much more interested in where there was a, where there was a toe. And are toes always engine operated, or were there other ways of powering them? Not to speak of various animals that could pull you out. 
There were boat tows, which was a sort of a that had an ancient trade. Like, like a slave in <laughs> um, There were even people who tried to do it as as, as now some modern people are doing it with sails and parachutes. Hmm. Shoot up and then go up the hill. And there were also times where you'd have a little little motor on your back down here and it would be sort of on runners to make this go. So yes, there were plenty of different sorts of ways. Never heard of that. Mm. Well, gosh, we must have that. Yeah, but anything on the history of the biathlon, I don't understand putting those two concepts together. Um, yes. Um, there isn't a, a paper in there. There was going to be, but it so happened that they were having a, a sort of a, a at Mammoth on the very weekend that, or the weekend before our conference, they were going to have a, a kind of a local biathlon uh, seminar, and the guy who was running it uh, simply couldn't do the two things. So it's unfortunate from that respect. Biathlon comes out of out of a. Um, a background of what used to be called a military patrol race. And <clears throat> uh, this was when, depending usually, either three soldiers, no, yeah, three soldiers, one NCO, non-commissioned officer, and one officer, provided a patrol of five, and they would have a race. That would be it. They would not shoot. This would be carrying your equipment and it would always be the rifle and the pack and so on. So that was sort of how that began. And then in 1924, at the Olympic Games, the first Olympic Games, which wasn't really called the Olympic Games at the time, so it was only a flip and after it before, um, they, <coughs> they had it a little bit more organized. Uh, and then little by little, it became more and more organized, so that by 1960, at the score games, that was when the first biathlon, such as we know it now, uh, came into um, came into being. I'm not sure of the date the first women's biathlon. Because I was thinking that it had to be military. Yeah, there had to be some connection. And, and very <coughs> probably most important in Russia in the 1930s. That's where you get a that's where where you get a huge fillip for the. Also, what influence did the, say, the 10th Mountain Division I'm, I'm have? sorry? What influence did the 10th Mountain Division have after the war on the ski uh, You find their members building ski areas. You find their members running ski companies. You find their members editing ski magazines. You find their members uh, inventing various bits having to do with skiing and making a, a go of it. Um, extraordinary, quite extraordinary. Now, having said that, let me tell you something about the tenth Any of your fathers, grandfathers, in the tenth Mountain? I go to tenth Mountain meetings every once in a while. Not many left now, but I do. And <clears throat> what's extraordinary is this, that all they talk about is skiing. And why that is so extraordinary is because during the war, they hardly skied. You know, they trained out in, out in uh, Colorado, oh yes. But where, did they, where, where were they sent? Up to Kiska in Alaska, down to Camp uh, Swift in Texas over to, to the, the Apennines in, in Italy. No skiing in any of those places. But yet, it was skiing which kept their culture alive, and it is skiing which keeps their culture alive. So, so from a philosophical, psychological point of view, uh, it's very, very interesting from that point of view. Just hear them telling their fibs. They love it. They love it. Okay, it's that moment to say thank you very much. I can tell when silence is a <laughs>